Namaste friends. Today I will talk about an important topic, the reckoning of Uttrayana, Dakshinayana and lunar months like Chaitra, Vaisakha etc. and a big corruption that has crept into these calculations in deep Kali Yuga. I will talk about it in such a way that everybody can understand what I am saying and I really appreciate it. If you can share this video widely, I really wish more people were aware of this so that eventually there is a push to fix this corruption in the mainstream. Uttrayana and Dakshinayana are very important. Uh, they are used for uh, muhurtas. For example, Uttrayana is preferred for Upnayana muhurtam. And also the lunar months are important because all the festivals, Sri Ram Navami, Janmashtami, Navratris, all these are dependent on when Chaitra starts, when Vaisakha starts, etc. So these are very important matters for our culture and religion. So let us look at the current convention. As per the current convention, current mainstream convention, Uttrayana and Dakshinayana, they start around January 14 and July 14. These are basically the dates when sun enters Makar Rasi and Karka Rasi in the Nirayana Chakra. There are two chakras, Nirayana Chakra or Sidereal Zodiac and Sayana Chakra or Tropical Zodiac. We will see later what they are. But if you use the Nirayana Chakra, uh, Sun entry into Makara and Sun entry into Karka or Uttrayana and Dakshinayana. That is how we take them today. Now let us look at the actual meaning of the words. Ayana means movement, traversing, traveling. So Uttrayana is Uttra plus Ayana, so northward journey. And Dakshinayana means Dakshina plus Ayana. Uh, it basically means southward journey. And the fact is, sun does move to the north in Uttrayana and to the south in Dakshinayana, but for much of Uttrayana and Dakshinayana, not entirety. And the, the, with the currently used dates, they are slightly off. They are not aligned to the real change of direction. You can actually see in the skies when sun has reached the southernmost point and start the northward journey. And similarly, when he reaches the northernmost point and starts the southern journey. So you can see those dates and the actual dates in the sky with what we comp what we use in the mainstream, they are off by around 23 days. And they will keep, the, the, the gap will keep increasing with time. So after 2000 years, it will be, instead of 23 days off, it will be 53 days off roughly. So it will just keep increasing like that. So where did we go wrong? Let us, let us see the actual dates now. Let's look at the current dates, correct dates. The northward journey starts on the winter solstice day, the astronomically significant day, winter solstice day. It, it happens around December 21, either December 20 or December 21. And the southward journey of sun starts on summer solstice day. It is around June 20, 20 or 21. And you can see the picture on right. I, I see that, I, I can, I realize that my face is obstructing some of the pictures. So I'll show just the picture in the next slide. But the bottom line is, you also can observe this in the sky. If you look at this picture on the December solstice, the winter solstice, we call it winter solstice in the northern hemisphere, but for the southern hemisphere people, it is actually the summer solstice. But the bottom line is, on the December solstice, sun is at the southernmost point and it starts moving to the north. If you look at its position in the sky at sunrise, noon, sunset, etc., you will see that he is moving to the north and uh, on June 20 or so, on the June solstice, he reaches the northernmost point and he actually starts the southern journey. And then on December solstice, December 20, he reaches the southern, uh, southernmost point and starts the northward journey. So this is fixed. The solstices are defined based on this, based on sun's travel in the, in the sky. So this is something you can physically observe. And this is the picture. If you, if you wanted to see the whole picture without my face obstructing it. So the thing is, our, our knowledge, the Hindu knowledge or dharmic knowledge is not illogical. Other religions are rigid in their interpretations. They basically say that this is how it is because so and so person said it or uh, this is what we believe in. But our, all our knowledge is very logical. And even if there are corruptions, because of the inherent logical structure in it, it is basically fixable always. So that's the beauty of the teachings of Rishis. Now let us look at what is tropical zodiac and what is sidereal zodiac. The Sayana Chakra or tropical zodiac is based on the seasons. 
sun always enters makara or capricorn on the shortest day and this is the term exactly parashara maharshi used when he taught maitreya the vishnu purana you can see in vishnu purana that parashara is teaching maitreya sun enters makara on the shortest day and it is also in in the modern terminology it is also known as the winter solstice and like i said it happens on uh, around december 2021 similarly sun enters karkarashi or cancer on the longest day again this was specifically mentioned by parashara maharshi in vishnu purana and this is also known as summer solstice and sun enters mesha and tula the other uh, movable signs on the equinoxes by equinoxes we mean day and night are equal and again parashara specifically says day and night have equal length when sun enters these rashis so this is the definition of tropical zodiac it is based on the seasons longest day shortest day winter summer etc on the other hand the sidereal zodiac or nirayana chakra is based on the stars that are in the sky aries for example always contains certain star constellations containing ashvini bharani and part of kritika etc so this is aligned to the stars fixed stars in the sky whereas sign chakra is based on the seasons and the angle between the sidereal and tropical zodiacs there is an angle they don't align perfectly and the angle is around 23 degrees right now and it will increase with time it will keep changing it will increase by around 30 degrees in about 2000 years so if you see after 2000 years the deviation would have been even more after another 2000 years even more and so on and this is by the way uh, technically the mathematical term is astronomical term is this is known as the precession of equinoxes basically equinoxes are are shifting basically now one important point i want to make here that rishis knew both of them as i said earlier parashara maharshi taught rashis of sayan chakra in vishnu purana where he specifically talked about entering makara on the shortest day entering karka on the longest day entering mesha and tula on the day when on the, on the day when day and night are equal length etc at the same time in brahat parasar hora shastram bphs parasara taught the same shishya maitreya both of them were taught to maitreya parasara taught rashis of the nirayana chakra where he talked about which nakshatras are in mesha and some people speculate that parasara lived around a time when sayan chakra and nirayan chakra coincided so he could not tell the difference but that is really illogical he is a rishi and also we believe that he belonged to uh, 3000 bc time frame and at that time these things did not align and the other thing is surya siddhanta explicitly uses both it it computes certain things in the nirayana chakra and it computes certain things in the sayan chakra and basically tells you how to convert to nirayana chakra so so surya siddhanta again another another classic is aware that there are two chakras and they are not coincidental so our rishis knew of both the sayana and nirayana chakras so my opinion is the tropical zodiac and sidereal zodiac both have their own purpose tropical zodiac is aligned to the seasons the seasons keep the rhythmic flow of time so it is used for reckoning calendar and specifically in vishnu purana when prasara taught ayanas when he taught ritus when he taught when chaitra vaisaka etc start he specifically used the tropical zodiac and sidereal zodiac is aligned to the stars and stars are the keepers of our destinies so this is for casting charts that reveal the destiny when you make a chart when you say that sun is in so and so rashi mesh rashi moon is in mithun rashi we are talking about rashis of the nirayana chakra there because uh, charts show destiny and destiny is represented by stars so the uh, the uh, uh, and stars basically are aligned to the sidereal zodiac that's why so both the zodiacs have their own purpose but unfortunately what happened is there is a corruption in the kali yuga in the in the in the west they ignored the sidereal zodiac completely and used tropical for everything for calendar for making the charts everything and the east ignored tropical and used sidereal for everything we make charts in the sidereal chart, zodiac we also compute the years months ayanas etc based on sidereal and both are wrong you have to use uh, for charts sidereal zodiac and for reckoning time you have to use the tropical zodiac which is aligned to the seasons so that is really the correct approach if you if you ask me 
and let us look at the lunar calendar the lunacy of the current mainstream convention will be even more clear the chaitra month chaitra masa is supposed to be in the vasant ritu spring and it is defined in current mainstream as the sun moon conjunction when sun and moon are exactly together in sidereal pisces and couple of things here if you use sidereal pisces as your definition right now it is coming in vasanta but 2000 years later or 4000 years later or 6000 years later it will keep moving it will go to grishma ritu it will go to uh, varsha ritu when it is in the rainy season it will later go to Uh, other ruthus like that sarad ruthu hemant ruthu it will even come in the winter it will just keep changing if you wait thousands of years so it is it will keep changing the ruthus it will not be always in vasanta if you define like this and the second thing is why pisces of all rasis aries is the first rasi there are there is significance of various rasis but pisces is the last rasi meena is the last rasi why is the conjunction meena of significance the real definition that parashara used for chaitra is tropical aries when sun and moon are together in tropical aries that should be the chaitra month and then if you define like that it will always remain in vasant ritu with this what will happen is if we stick to this a few thousand years later somebody will come and say hey chaitra is not coming in vasanta let's take sidereal aquarius now instead of pisces so it will just keep changing Uh, so if you use sidereal pisces right now both the definitions sidereal pisces and tropical aries will coincide 75% of the time because like i said the gap between the two zodiacs is 23 degrees which is basically 3/4 of 30 degrees so by using sidereal and shifting it by one sign we ensure that 75% of the time we get the same calculation but sometimes things are off so festivals like navratri sri ram navami janmashtami all these things and rasim hajayanti all these things they are all they are all off by a month sometimes because you reckon the chaitra month and vaisakha month uh, etc incorrectly so this is really unfortunate that we are using this definition based on the sidereal pisces we should be using tropical aries and more importantly uttrayana and dakshinayana it is unfortunate that we are reckoning them a few weeks later than they actually start so please please try to spread this video so that people are aware of this corruption so to conclude a reform is needed these corruptions need to be fixed and i hope that leading panchanga makers can take initiative and reform in their own panchangas so that this corruption can be weeded out it will take a long time it won't happen in a in a second it will take many many years of concerted efforts and unfortunately i am a person with strong moksha trikonas i have five planets including four in the eighth house so i'm i when i talk passionately i talk about it but i just after after a while i just cut off and i don't really care so i'm not somebody who will build a big organization or big tradition etc so i'm not that kind of a person so i hope that people who are in a position to do that will take initiative i hope that some religious pithas or some powerful leaders spiritual and religious leaders will take note of this and take a firm stand so that things can be reformed in the coming decades and at least use the right ayana uttrayana or dakshinayana in the sankalpas that you take for your pujas and by the way jagannath hora software it supports both the definitions so if you look at jagannath hora if you click on lunar calendar options you will see leave amanta that's the definition there is a sidereal signs most popular star align tropical signs vishnu purana says an align so basically if you click click pick this that will be basically the right definition so jagannath hora does support it uh, i really hope that you can spread this and people are more aware and there is a there is a pushback on the panchanga makers in the coming decades and this unfortunate corruption can be weeded out from our uh, tradition thank you very much om tat sat sarvam shri krishna arpanamastu loka samasta sukhino bhavantu sarve jana sukhino bhavantu yavat bhumandale sanatan dharmo vardhatu visheshta bhartakhande america varshe tibet rashtre cha 
Om Shanti Shanti Shanti